Morning Booktube. Uh, Bill Rudenberg here with the Rudenberg Library. It's Friday morning. Got a Friday reads for you. Give you a little bit of the lowdown on what's been going on here at my home and my reading and plans for reading and all that kind of stuff. Um, of course, my my reading, I originally had planned to get uh, one book done and get heavily into another book and, you know, life happens. So, so let's tell you about what happened with my life. <laughs> Uh, so my wife decided she wanted to paint some rooms here in the house and uh, so she painted our bedroom and that was of course about a two-day process you know when you count moving stuff out of the room getting it all taped off get it painted let it dry move it all back in so about a two-day process and I was uh, uh, with my babysitting my daughter my youngest daughter during that whole process and so afternoon reading was out of the question and then um, we ended up sleeping. We had a big camp out um, Monday night, or maybe it was Sunday night. I can't remember. Anyway, ended up having a big camp out with my three year old, and she absolutely loved that. And my wife and I slept down here in the living room uh, with her. And so getting up in the morning and reading was actually out of the question for a couple of days, also. And then I was also wrapping up units with uh, my my eighth grade class because we were reading a book, uh, you know, via the internet. We've been <clears throat> reading a book there, and that took up some time in the morning. So anyway, my reading plans kind of got delayed a little bit. But on a lighter note, my bedroom upstairs uh, looks a whole lot better. She, my wife, always does a really good job with picking picking colors out, and so she was a. Uh, she was, you know, painting and, and got a light blue color. It looks really good, really sharp. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about, I thought it was kind of funny. I've been noticing on several people's channels, they've been talking about haircuts. Now, everybody always makes fun of me because of my lack of hair. But I would say during these last couple months, I'm having the last laugh because... I don't have to go to anybody to get a haircut. I can either do it myself or I can have my wife do it. And so um, laugh all you want at my bald head, but right now I'm having the last laugh. I think that's it's just been kind of funny listening to everybody with their with their hair getting out of whack and all the stuff on Facebook, the little memes and everything. Anyway, uh, another thing that happened. Uh, that we've got to really get working on. I, I worked on it a little bit, but I got to get them hauled off. As I showed you last week on Friday reads, the we got almost a foot. Of, I think the official was the official count was ten and a half inches of snow, but I know in some spots it was it was pretty deep. It was close to a foot, and uh, I showed you a video of what my backyard, my side yard and backyard look like, and a couple of my trees got hammered with that snow and bent the pines down and it ended up actually breaking off a lot of branches and um, so I got to get those removed from the yard and um, that's going to take up some time in the afternoon. So uh, last week I also think I forgot to tell you our, our Iowa schools officially have shut down and so now we've um, kind of have an official plan for how we're going to end the school year with the kids and and um, I know a lot of you around the nation were already in that boat, but uh, our governor made the official decision, and I think I forgot to mention that. Now we're just waiting on, are we going to have baseball and softball season in the summer? Because we play during the summer, and so I'm one of the baseball coaches, so that's kind of what we're waiting on. I, I don't know that it looks real good, but, you know, you never know. So anyway, um, another awesome thing, my, my wife, when we were out uh, – we had to get some some groceries and and of course the lumber stores the hardware stores are not closed right at this moment in in our area and so we stopped and bought a couple of boards that we chopped into three pieces so that my upstairs shelving I'm, I'm putting in some new shelves in my upstairs in the upper room so that I can hold a few more books because yeah I need that but anyway, I've been wanting to do that for a long, long time, and we don't have any more room to put in extra cases, so we thought, you know, we can, you see all the extra room in between the books, you can squeeze that and make the make the books fit on there. You know, you'll have to put them on there by size, but you can get extra books on your shelf. So that's what I'm working on. She, she brought the board home all chopped up yesterday and ready to go, and 
And so I'm going to be staining the board and so that it matches the rest of the shelf. And anyway, going to have some extra books on the shelves upstairs. All right, so let's talk about this week in, I don't want to call it a book haul because it's not really a book haul, but as we did shopping, um, some of the stuff that we were able to, to pick up, because I did get a couple of items. Uh, we were at the Dollar Tree, and as my wife was doing the shopping, I was looking at the shelves and, and finding, you know, in their book collection, and I found a biography. Um, I have n never read anything on Supreme Court justices, and this was the do this was only a dollar, so I thought you know can't hurt anything. And this is on uh, Scalia, A Court of One by Bruce Allen Murphy. I have no idea if it's good. Um, it was just a buck. I thought why not? Why not try it? And so uh, I picked that up from the Dollar Tree. And then we also had another issue this week. Our dryer went out. And so we've we've bought it used from our local appliance store, Wiseman's, and Wiseman's is still open. And so uh, while my wife was out there looking for you know in the in the appliances, looking for a new dryer and stuff, I was looking in their book collection and I found a book by Ernie Pyle. Here is your war. And I was pretty excited to pick that up because when I'm teaching World War II. Uh, there's a selection of his writings when we're looking at North Africa that I use with my seventh grade kids. And <coughs> excuse me, um, I was looking to see if, and I haven't, I haven't like done a thorough job of looking, but I was hoping maybe that was actually the, the segment that we read was actually in this book. And so I'll I'll find that out later. But I thought that'd be a nice collect addition to my collection of World War II stuff. And then in the mail, I got my Smithsonian magazine. I always like those. Uh, they always got some interesting articles. And so I got that in the mail. So that that's the all of the additions that I got this week. Now, um, what I read this week. So I got, first of all, with my 7th and 8th grade uh, that I've been working on, I got Frederick Douglass all finished up. Um, wasn't a very long book. It's only, what is it, 100 and... 24 pages, so it's not very long, but uh, it's it's a good read with the kids to help explain the the seriousness of the issue of slavery and give them firsthand accounts of that. And so we got that read or finished it off, and that's an easy read if anybody wants to tackle that. the The first autobiography by him. I mean, you could read that easily in an afternoon, a couple hours, and you'd re you'd have it done. Some of you read fast enough to probably do it in an hour. Um, the next one that I got read was Sabotage, The Mission to Destroy Hitler's Atomic Bomb by Neil Bascom. Um, that was a good book. Um, I thought that was very interesting. I, this is actually something from my middle school shelves. I had one of my students pick it up at the book fair and donated it to my room. thought that was really nice of her. And um, so I wanted to read that and see what that was like. And uh, it was an interesting story. Uh, again, something I didn't have any experience in, so I learned something new. Um, now, here's here's my question to you, BookTube. How do you feel about audiobooks? Um, I'm still kind of not really dead set on that. I that I like them. My my concentration level's never fully there when I'm doing audiobooks. And uh, this one, I actually started to read, and then I finished it on an audiobook. Because on my iPad, I've been downloading some books so that, like, when I'm doing dishes, I can, you know, listen to that and get a chunk of it done while I'm doing dishes. And, you know, and I'll, I'll do dishes once or twice a day. And so I can get plenty of extra uh, read. well, reading. It's not really reading. But um, extra, extra book time. How about we call it that? I can get that in. And uh, so anyway, I finished this. It'll have to, if I ever go to use it in detail... I will definitely have to do a reread on it because some of the stuff I was I was hearing it, but I bet it was not necessarily sinking in. And with that being said, I also read or read listened to uh, John Adams under fire: the founding fathers' fight in the excuse me found the founding fathers' fight for justice in the Boston Massacre murder trial, and that was by Dan Abrams. And I kind of like Dan Abrams' books. I think they're they're pretty decent. I'd read the one on Lincoln, 
And now I've read this one on John Adams, and uh, I, I, I like it. There's another one on Theodore Roosevelt that I'd like to read, but um, again, I have to do a reread on it because I, I just the listening to it is not necessarily fully doing it for me. And that also brings me to another one that I am almost done with that I'll probably finish either today or tomorrow uh, listening to it through the audiobook, and that's Prisoners of Geography. Ten Maps That Explain Everything About the World by Tim Marshall. That is an awesome book. That is really, really cool. I'm always trying to explain to kids how important geography is and, and how um, you know world history is really played out through just the the landscape. You know, so certain things can or cannot happen based on the geography of the area. So I'm always trying to explain to them the importance of that. And uh, this book fully goes into detail on that. And it, it talks about just geography in general and then the geopolitical landscape. And it's a little bit dated. You know, I think it's four or five years old. So it's a little bit dated, but it's very, very interesting looking at how he is linking geography with the politics and, and with history. It's very good. And um, it, it does everything that I like to do in class with the kids. And so, um, anyway, I'd, I'd highly recommend that, even if it is a little bit dated, but just, just the ideas of linking geography and history and how they work together. Um, you know, he, he, he went over in that book, he went over uh, the, the issues with Russia and uh, how having the natural resources in their area is, is going to really lead them into maybe being one of the world powers and how that's all playing out. And it, it, it talked about, uh, let's see here, um, talked about, you know, having the different coastlines and how that, how that affects, you know, being able to, to travel and have a Navy and in, in different parts of the world. And, um, uh, not necessarily just with Russia, but with other areas. Cause it talked about, uh, India, it talked about China, it talked about, um, He's got several different things that he's talked about. But anyway, very good book. It'll definitely be a reread for me once I... I'm listening to it on audio right now, but it'll be a reread. So my plans for this week. I've been working on The Impending Crisis. This should have been done last Sunday. And um, I'm down to two chapters. Uh, I probably will read one this afternoon. And then the, the next one... Well, maybe two this afternoon. I doubt it, but maybe two. Uh... It might be tomorrow morning when I finish it, and I do plan on doing a, um, a book review on that if, I, um, if anybody cares to watch that. It's been a very, very good book. I thoroughly enjoyed it. He's very, uh, David Potter was very detailed in some of the stuff. I've, I've read about the individual incidents, but he goes into it from, you know, he's looking at voting statistics and, sh and showing how, um, you know, by looking at the vote, Maybe the opinions of certain parts of the nation were going one way or the other. Anyway, he, he does a lot of statistical stuff with it, and I just thought it was very, very interesting, and I'd like to share my thoughts with you on that. And then um, my next book, my next three books that I'm going to pick up, and this will be the order that I pick them up in, um, and they're not going to get read in a week. I can guarantee that. This will be over the next few weeks. So you'll see these books several more times. Um, another book from my TBR list, The Political Life of Abraham Lincoln, Self-Made Man. That's what I'm working on next. I'm like 94 pages in right now. And then, like I told you last week, I'd, I'd actually planned on getting a start on this and haven't done it yet. But John Keegan's The American Civil War, A Military History. I plan on getting a start on that. I think... I think that might be a relatively fast read. I'm not going to, uh, don't quote me on that, but I think I'll be able to read that one a little bit fast. And then um, after that, another TBR item, Reelecting Lincoln, The Battle for the 1864 Presidency. So these are my three books that I really want to get done in, you know, the, the end of April and through May. I want to get those done in, in the month of May because that's my Civil War month with my eighth grade. So all three of those obviously go with uh, the topic I'm teaching. And then the last book that I know I'll get read pretty quick is the new John Grisham book coming out. And uh, I have that pre-ordered. It's supposed to come in the 28th, but obviously probably going to get delayed. My wife said not to expect it on the 28th. But uh, I'm pretty excited about that, 
And um, anyway, that is that is my reading for this week, book two. I hope you guys are all uh, safe and healthy and enjoying family time. And until next time, thank you for watching and happy reading.